So, Marissa, what do we think? Jump or jump, right? Exactly. This guy has that capacity, but he's not going over. Something's off. Yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking, but what? It's like he's waiting for something. We need this ID. See what I can do. Edward Burns plays a New York City police detective. The movie's called Man on a Ledge. He's trying to get a desperate man off the ledge. So Ed Burns has been acting, directing, writing, and producing since his debut film, The Brothers McMullen. That was 17 years ago. Hello, Ed hey, Burns. Hey, how are you? Good morning. How's it going? Good to see you. It, it's going really well. But can I just start with Brothers McMullen for just a second? Because I saw that's when I became smitten with you, Eddie Burns, oh, <laughs> way back then. Has anything been? And it a, hasn't stopped. And, no, and he knows that it hasn't <laughs> stopped. Has anything been as sweet to you as that? You made you were the darling of Sundance. Yeah. It cost you twenty five thousand. It made over ten million. Has anything duplicated that moment for you? Uh, no, you can't really ever I go wonder. back to that moment when you're a kid who is a production assistant making eighteen thousand dollars a year, yeah. and then all of a sudden you show up at Sundance, and literally overnight your life changes. Not only do I, I sell the film, but I'm being offered acting roles. They want to green light the next film uh, I want to make. It's like so, right this way, Mr. Burns. Uh, yeah, it was exactly. It was one of those moments. Yeah. I said to go ahead. Oh, go ahead. oh, I said to Gail right before we started, you seem to have it all together. You know, a, a great wife, yeah. beautiful wife, great children. You get to do action adventure studio movies as an actor, and then you make films like this, and also like Newlywed, the new one, which is about your family, about your neighborhood, yeah. and this love affair with New York City. It's the magic formula. Uh, yeah, and it, you know, it was never the plan, but you know, it's been 17 years, and you. You know, it's a tough business. There are highs and lows, and it's just a matter of like trying to navigate it and figure it out. And I think I've fallen, on, lucky enough to fall upon this formula that works, where I get to go act in these studio films. And you know, you do a few. You know, Paul Newman had a great quote. He used to talk about his choices. He would say, "One for them, one for me." Yeah. Um, and that's kind of what I've tried to adopt here. Like, I'll I'll do the studio acting gigs, and that helps sort of finance or give me the creative freedom to make my little indie films. But your little indie film only costs seven. Uh, $9,000. $9,000. Yeah. I thought that was a typo, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no. I really did. Because I'm thinking Brothers McMullen was 25 yeah. and this was not. I thought it was a typo. Well, it is the most exciting time right now if you're a kid coming out of film school. Uh, because when, when I was trying to make McMullen, it, it was very hard. That point of entry was so tough because, you know, that film cost 25. It was, it was just tough to get those films made. With these digital cameras now, we shot this film on a camera that I bought at B&H Photo for $3,000. Wow. And the look of the film, you know, McMullen looks like a gritty, grainy yeah. student film. This film looks like a, a professional film. So if you're a kid coming out of film school now, mm. in the way that, you know, um, a novelist just needed the word processor or the typewriter or a painter needed the canvas and the oils, now... Filmmakers are afforded that same creative freedom, so it's yeah. exciting. So that's one part of it, the technology, technology being more accessible and a little bit more, uh, a little easier to buy for some people, but there's also this other form of technology, things like social networking. You've totally embraced wow. Twitter, yeah. and this has really come to work well for you, too, in terms of your professional life. Well, you know, I mean, I've used Twitter for a couple of different things. One is, you know, you're making these micro-budgeted films. You don't have the, the marketing budget that a, a film like Man on a Ledge, mm -hmm. let's say, would have. So you have to get out there and use social media. Um, and what you know, me and some other filmmakers have been able to do is like, you get all these folks to fight on your behalf. And they're the, the, the people out there who are writing the reviews and spreading the word of mouth. And we'll see, if I tweet, uh, we'll see absolute spikes on our iTunes rental charts or on our VOD numbers based on um, you know, how excited they are by the film. And I've also used them when I was writing Newlyweds I tweeted out uh, an initial idea for the film. I said, you know, when you, when you guys were first married, what was the first big fight about? And I'd say nine out of the ten responses <laughs> I got had something to do with a family member. You know, we had to move in yes. with my yes. mother-in-law. Yes. Yeah. My brother showed up on, and crashed on our Everybody couch. Everybody relates left. to that. And that sort of helped shape the screenplay. In Man on a Ledge, you played a cop. Yeah. Your father's a cop. You yeah. played lots of cops. Yeah. What's that about? Um, Do you like cops? In? <laughs> yeah, right? I like cops yeah. too. I mean, you know, I'm an Irish guy from New York, so anytime mm -hmm. there's a film in New York that needs a cop, I, you know, a lot you. of times I'll get a call. Let's call um, it And you know, I mean, now that you know, 17 years into the business, uh, I, I don't get the hard time that I used to get uh, from the from, family. From, from the family, yeah, you right. know, uh, I, I guess hey, I Eddie. walk the walk a little better than I used to. So. Yeah. No, I, I am so fascinated by you, Ed Burns, your life, because every time they say Ed Burns, married to a supermodel wife, as a guy, do you get a little extra ting? 
Yes, I'm married to a supermodel. <laughs> uh, yes, I am. <laughs> you must get a little extra tape. I, I, no, I mean, you know, I mean. Uh, it's not I'm, a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> I mean, I mean you know, Christy, thing. she's yes, great, and we have yes. a great thing. And no, I get a tape, too. If I was married to Christy, I'd get a tape. <laughs> I get a tape. <laughs> but one of the best things I saw, you were on a subway. New York is very much your home, with your daughter, Grace. And it was so sweet. She was standing on your lap, and you mm -hmm. sort of embraced walking around and living in the city of New York. You're not running and hiding. You're saying, we are here. I, I think you have to. I think, you know, part of the reason Christy and I wanted to stay here is we're, we're both New Yorkers and we love the city and we also want a normal life. Yes. And the thing is, New Yorkers, you know, kind of leave you alone. I mean, people yes. are usually say, hey, what's up? Our thanks nice. to Ed Burns. Thank you, our friend.